Uh, one thing I read, uh, you write up uh, that you, you're a white guy who grew up mostly around white people, but you're obsessed with black culture and black people, right? Mm. Uh, when you were younger, did white people turn you off? In, in, I mean, were they like difficult? Well, so I grew up in Maine, which is 99% white. And uh, I, the thing is, uh, f for my whole life, I struggled with social skills, right? I had a hard time uh, kind of understanding and social, picking up on social cues. And uh, I was never able to get very much good advice from other people who happened to be 99% white. I went to a school that was like 100% white, and I never got any helpful good specific advice is like, hey, here's how you're coming off. Maybe you should try it this way. Maybe instead of saying that, you should say this. And here's the issue. You know, it was always, pe I feel like white people, for whatever reason, you know, I say in the book, there's plenty of things white people are good at. But uh, for whatever reason, they don't seem to be super good at articulating the social skills that just come naturally to them. Uh. Whereas uh, once I, when I was like 17, 18, I started getting into hip hop music and then I started getting into black culture on the whole. And uh, when I moved to Florida and started hanging out with black people, I realized that they seem to be much more, you know, street smart and have, a, have much more social intelligence. And that comes with being better at giving you specific advice as to like, here's how you're coming off. If you say that, they're gonna think this. If you say this, they're gonna think that. And I realized that everything is just much easier. And also I realized that if I, like I never had a style that fit me. Like I tried different, I tried like dressing like a skater, like a preppy kid, and none of it ever really fit me. And then when I started getting into hip hop and R&B music, I started looking at the way black guys dress, you know, in the 2000s, they had baggy jeans, they had the fitted hats with the sticker on it, you know, they had ice around their neck. And I thought, wait, who says I can't dress like that? You know, why, why can't I dress like that? And I started dressing like that and I realized I love the way these clothes look on me. And it was finally an image and a style I could embrace. And uh, I just kind of ran with that. And then I realized um, if I just start acting like a black guy, you know, whatever you want to say about black people, I know you're, you're critical at times, but you have to admit black guys are confident and they have a lot of style and they're usually not awkward. You usually don't mean an awkward black person other than, Amazing. you know, Steve Urkel. But <laughs> black people usually, they always know what to say. I feel like they're very confident and so that, as someone who struggled with social skills was very appealing to me. And I realized, damn, like, why am I trying to get advice from other white guys? I could just do whatever black guys do. And guess what? It started working. And it was also a language that I could fit in with my peers. Like I started trying to, when I was, obviously I was single in high school and I started talking to girls and I didn't know what to talk to girls about. And then I started talking to them about, oh, this rapper, or that rap song. And I started using, you know, urban slang with them. And it was like, oh my God, they actually are talking back to me. Like I'm speaking their language now. Like I'm Amazing. asking them about this Lil Wayne song and that, you know, that this T-Pain song and they know exactly what I'm talking about. They're like, oh, I love that song. Yeah, that's, and so I was like, this is my, I was like, this is, uh, this is my thing now. I'm gonna. So were you rejected by whites? Were you start acting black? Uh, some of them, some of them thought it was funny. Some of them got offended and I, I always just kind of intuitively knew that like the white people that are getting offended by my interest, my genuine interest in black culture are the white people who know nothing about black people. Know nothing about black culture because I, I just, I intuitively understood like black people are not offended by this. They think it's hilarious in fact. They think it's cool. <laughs> And why would they be offended? It's like I, I say in the book, I say to any white people who think that this would be offensive to black people, you taking interest in their culture, I say, if a black person enjoyed shopping with you at Whole Foods and going on mountain biking with you and going to funky coffee shops to hang out with you and talk about vinyl records, would you get offended? Or would you be happy that you guys had something in common? Amazing. Just for the record, blacks are very insecure. 
Uh, you just don't have sense enough to know it. But they don't well, act. But insecure. they don't act insecure. Though. But they do. You just can't see it. I, I guess I don't see it. So one quick thing, I noticed you made a video, a rap video, I guess, mm -hmm. a rap video, right? That's when you're in your black mode, and at that time you were dating black hood rats. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, what was so attracted by black female hood rats? So the song you're talking about is a parody of the Race Remmerd song, No Type. Right. The original goes, I don't got no type, bad bitches is the only thing that I like. And so I thought <laughs> it would be awesome if I, I realized there's all these rap songs out there. There's rap songs saluting white women, saluting Hispanic women, saying, oh, we love mixed women. But there's no rap songs out there just saluting black women, especially not by a, by a white guy. And uh, I thought, wouldn't it be hilarious if I made a rap song just saluting black women from a, from a white guy or a, a white guy? And so I made a parody, I don't got no type, black bitches is the only thing that I like. <laughs> and uh, if you want to go find this song, it's, it's on my YouTube. Just Google my name, you'll find it. Dylan Volk. Yes. yes. Um, have you ever dated black hood raps? Dated, no. Oh. Have you ever dated a black girl? Uh, I wouldn't, not dated. Uh, I mean, I've, I haven't really, I've only had like one or two brief relationships at all before my current girlfriend. She's my first oh. like serious relationship. Have I ever hung out with a black girl? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we all know what hung out means. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to keep it family friendly. This is a, this is a family right. friendly. Friendly right wing broadcast. <laughs> so, are you over the black culture now? Uh, I'm not obsessed with it anymore. I still appreciate it. Uh, and I, the thing is, even when I was obsessed with black culture, I knew that other people were probably looking at me thinking, when he gets older, he's going to look back on this time in his life and be like, what was I thinking? Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed. Let me delete all those pictures. That's not the case at all. I look back and I totally understand why I was obsessed with black culture. It makes total sense to me. <laughs> I'm not obsessed with it anymore, right. but when I was 18, 19, 20, 21, I totally get it. How yeah. do black people sound? Let me hear you uh, talk like a black person. Mm. <clears throat> hey, uh, 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 let me ask you something real quick. <laughs> let me ask you something right quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think of a, think of another quote. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm talking about we uh, pop bottles in the club, bruh. Whip sitting on 24s. <laughs> and you like that? <clears throat> yeah, well, the thing is, ever since Elvis Presley, white teenagers have been looking to black culture to mimic the trends and copy the styles. And that, that's not for no reason. Like, this has been going on for decades. Oh, amazing.